to the UVM Extension New Farmer Program webinar series, which is sponsored by the Working Lands Enterprise Program and UVM Extension. Uh, today's session is on, uh, will provide an introduction to Farm Hack with our speakers Daniel Grover and Dan Cox, who are uh, going to spend some time introducing us to the services of this um, really unique um, program. And so I think without further ado, I will turn it over to them. I will let you know that uh, if you have questions or comments, please type them into the chat box so that we can uh, read them and respond to them. We can't hear you folks. We hope you all can hear us just fine. Um, and then at the end, you'll see a um, link for a survey. If you please write down that link uh, so that you can connect to it uh, later and, and give us some feedback. So thank you all for joining us. Um, and I guess without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Dan and Dorn. Great. Uh, thanks, Heidi. It's uh, great to be here and be able to talk a little bit about uh, uh, farm hack and our open source approach to agriculture. Um, Dan's going to do a little bit of an introduction, but first we thought we'd show a short introductory film. And then, uh, and then the rough overview is we'll go through uh, sort of the process uh, that uh, uh, and the services that FarmHack has uh, currently and uh, how folks can participate and then we're really excited about uh, answering whatever questions we can. So I'm going to try and transfer over to uh, my desktop here to show this film and, uh, and then uh, we'll go from there. So you should all be able to uh, see this. And uh, if you cannot uh, see this, um, please uh, let us know. We'll type the link to this so you can follow along if it for some reason doesn't show up. I'm not sure the sound is coming through. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it is. No sound? No. So All maybe right. you can, can you talk, can you narrate as you? Yeah. So we, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Sure. I could uh, sort of narrate it a little bit. Though, though I will say the video is pretty broken up too, so I'm not sure if it's if the video itself is effective either. Um, All right. Maybe we should just continue with the the slides and then um, and then ask folks to come back to watching the video. That's great. So let's put the the we can put the link in and we'll go back to uh, back to the slides here. Okay, so uh, I'll put the link in there. You guys can watch that at your leisure. Evidently, the sound is not coming through today. It seemed to work yesterday. Um, great. So, uh, Daniel, do you want to take off, uh, sort of basically walking through the uh, overview of Farmac? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, thank you all for joining us uh, for this webinar about Farmac and the Farmac community. Um, and thanks Heidi and UVM for sponsoring this and, and making these things available to farmers. It's really great. Um, I'm Daniel Grover. I'm a draft powered farmer in central New York State. And I've been involved in the farm hack community for the past couple of years. So we're, we're just really excited to be here today and share farm hack with you. Um, 
and yeah, feel free to type and ask questions uh, whenever they come up throughout the presentation. So I'll go ahead and get started. Um, it's amazing today that we have these tools that we can use to, to analyze and contemplate both our soil, microbiology, and global climate change. And the costs of these technologies that we're using um, that are enabling us to capture and then communicate what's going on on our farms and in our communities are falling rapidly and the technologies are becoming vastly more accessible year by year. So a big piece of what we come to Farm Hack with is this concept that our tools themselves are a reflection of the way that we see ourselves and the way that we relate to our environment and of our values. Um, so as farmers, of course, we understand that there's a huge difference between using a biological or an ecological method of weed control and spraying herbicide on our crop fields to control weeds. So it's just an example of how the tools that we use to farm and the way that we use them reflect how we understand and relate to our environment and the tools that we choose and the tools we develop and improve on our farms are this, this direct re reflection of this relationship we have with the land. So as, as folks are aware, you know, the tools that are available to us um, as small farmers are primarily designed for large farms, for top-down energy, capital, and chemical intensive agriculture. And um, so in 2010, FarmHack was conceived of by a group of uh, startup farmers and engineers and technologists, um, along with a couple of, a couple of uh, formative nonprofits, um, as a way of reversing that power dynamic that I'm talking about um, of the industrial process and the agri-corporate structure. And our vision of, um, of the vision of farm hack and vision of, of small farms for us is that every farm is a research and development farm for new technologies, methods, and ways of improving agriculture. And so a part of what we do is, is this website, which is a platform where you can share the tools, ideas, and insights that you have. And you can also look for inspiration from other farmers and inventors who have figured out, you know, a good way to do things on their farms in their particular bioregion or situation. And FarmHack itself is is um, is built on open source technology, software, and open source principles. You've all, of course, used Wikipedia. Um, open source Apache servers run the internet, and that's how FarmHack operates too. It's about reducing barriers to knowledge exchange and designing, building, and documenting technologies in a layered, peer-to-peer, -peer, collaborative way. And it's built on this rich culture of free and open source software. There are many, many open source projects out there. And it's applying those ideas that were, that were conceived of and developed in the open source um, software community for problems of hardware and, and growing techniques um, for small farms. So it's, it's very much about um, the, the online presence, but it's even more so about the in-person presence, or it's also about the in-person presence. Um, and it's about in-person events. Um, there, we've had over 20 in-person farm hack events, both organized by a core group of organizers and organized spontaneously by partners around the country. And these are, these are events where folks get together for creating, mixing, sharing, making, growing, eating, and drinking together. And it's about that collaborative design process, um, both in-person and online, that enables us to work better because we're working together. So that's a brief overview of what FarmHack is. Um, are, there, are there any questions from anyone at this point? I'd be happy to, to answer any questions that you type in. Um, and if not, we'll dive right into looking at some uh, tool documentation um, and what that actually looks like on the FarmHack website. Great. Uh, 
Thanks, Daniel, for the overview. Um, I'm going to bring up the website again. This is uh, Doran Cox. I'm the uh, board president uh, of FarmHack, which is an independent 501c3 at this point nonprofit to oversee this mission and to hold this intellectual property in common uh, and put it into the uh, so that we can each build on each other's uh, our best ideas. And as Daniel said, this is about open source technology where we're trying to not create a product that is just better than the competition, but the best possible product that uh, we will actually use ourselves uh, and generate uh, demand from within our own community. So really this is about building the tools that we all want to use ourselves and then build uh, uh, a process, a manufacturing process to support that and support process. So having a community supported. So instead of having the consumer related uh, sort of model where we depend on a dealer network and customer support and warranties and so forth. What we have instead is a community that's developing and supporting each other and creating the products that we're noticing work best in our own in our own farms. So a lot of the best, you know, there's more innovation that happens on farms every day uh, than in all the universities and research labs. But most of those ideas stay on the farm or maybe they get to their neighbor or somebody on the other part of the county. Um, so we also noticed that when we're at uh, conferences that there's some great ideas and some good brainstorms, but often that activity stops uh, during that weekend or those couple of days. So we really feel that the way in which knowledge exchange happens is to document it. And so that's what I'm going to show you here uh, as we jump to uh, jump to the website and what uh, we're, what the, uh, the farm hack website is about, which in itself, as Daniel said, is a, an open source tool itself. And so that's constantly evolving too. And we've recruited lots of web developers and engineers and folks to help improve that. And uh, the farm hack site is all, it's all user generated content. That means the community itself is what uh, um, is responsible for uh, the content that's posted. So uh, myself or Daniel or any of you are responsible for creating the quality of the, the resource that's up there. And I uh, should be up in a second. And so what I'm going to show you here uh, is uh, on the upper left-hand corner of the current website, you can see a, a selection for tools. Um, and this is a list of the over 100 tools that uh, our users have contributed and made open source. So this is the opposite of patenting. Um, and I'm going to walk through uh, about four different tools here at the top just to give an example of what uh, of the, some of the history of that and how this system works. So the first one I can show you is, and, and they range from everything from electronics projects to welding projects um, uh, to software. Um, but I'll give you uh, just an example uh, of, a, of one of the first tools that was posted on FarmHack, which is this FIDO temperature alarm for uh, greenhouses. So this was in response to a grower who had the issue of uh, having a greenhouse down the road and they had a particularly hot spring then, uh, and they lost a lot of their starts um, because they didn't, uh, in the middle of the day and in April, it got up to 80 degrees which, and then which overheated the greenhouse and they were just a couple hours behind getting to open up the sides. Um, so they, uh, in our one of our first in-person farm hack meetings, they presented this problem, and there were a number of uh, uh, software engineers and and hardware folks, uh, electronic hardware folks there, who said, well, we've got solutions for that that are very low cost. The cost of a lot of the technology to uh, both monitor and then uh, link into um, a low cost cell phone has really come down. So they built for under $100. Uh, a system uh, which was an open source hardware board with a mobile phone that would text message when the temperature went out of range. Um, that has since uh, uh, merged and, and so they posted this design uh, onto FarmHack and became a collaborative project and since then there have been about a half dozen variations of that um, with, as technologies have uh, has changed, which includes if you go to the the, uh, the farm hacks uh, tool site and you browse, 
uh, down, you'll see a whole bunch of other legacy projects, uh, like a wireless garden field node sensor. The uh, if we go down here, there's a uh, Wi-Fi uh, farm guide, a uh, mobile solar electric fence system, um, a system to attach multiple sensors, uh, a compost monitor, an electric fence monitor. Um, all of these systems uh, grew. Uh, very quickly based on the this initial project and the fact that the original project uh, was freely shared and all of the parts associated with it, all of the code to run it, the assembly instructions were all documented uh, documented here. This particular entry is the second generation FIDO and you'll notice that uh, some of the instructions are, are not yet installed. Um, one important thing to note here on this tool and Daniel will go into this a little more is that this is like a Wikipedia site. Anybody can now edit this documentation and make it better. So the idea is to promote collaboration in developing these solutions, these tools. Um, I'll show you another uh, example here. Um, so that was an example of an electronics project that uh, was an early one. Another one is this uh, roller. Uh, cover crop roller, which was addressing some of the issues of trying to uh, use no-till in an organic system. Now, uh, the Rodale Institute uh, made their plans open source uh, early on and sort of set the standard, demonstrated what it's like. Instead of patenting this technology that they developed, they instead said, well, uh, it's much more advantageous to, to put this out in, in the world and publish the, uh, the CAD drawings so that anybody can manufacture it. Um, there are now commercial manufacturers that manufacture their version, but because they made it open source, you can see here there are multiple versions that have been developed uh, around not just in, so the Rodale developed it in Pennsylvania. It was quickly copied uh, elsewhere in Pennsylvania, in New York State. Um, uh, this is uh, this is in New York State, uh, but then there are other versions that were modified. So this is a this was a French modification that worked better. The Rodale's version worked great for really flat fields. We had uh, veggie uh, producers who were much more interested in working with the same technique, but in uh, raised beds uh, or shaped uh, shaped beds. And so here's the same principle, but applied. Uh, to a flexible system. And again, this all happened fairly quickly and not just and expanded the conversation beyond what was happening in Pennsylvania uh, to, as I mentioned, uh, for, uh, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, New York State, uh, southern parts of the, of the state to uh, in, in the photos I just showed you were from France. These are uh, German versions uh, that were uh, created uh, as well. Um, and so this just goes to show when this knowledge is shared, we get much more rapid feedback and adaptation and uh, create products that are going to be much more likely to be appropriate for our, for our own use. Um, and we bring in more people into the conversation. Um, and you can see some of that documentation and changes in discussion that happens here uh, within, within the site. Um, and Daniel will go into it a little bit more, but you can also see that in addition to the documentation, we have uh, the ability to ask the other participants questions and submit new information, submit an idea, ask questions, and report uh, problems. So it's not just about a report about how this works, but also about uh, constantly improving um, and uh, reporting back on how things are actually working in the field. So another example of that sort of international adaptation uh, is of the Triangle Quick Attach, uh, which is an improvement on three-point hitch uh, system to enable a very rapid change for, multiple, for implements on farm, especially applicable in veggie operations where you're often changing equipment. It also solves a safety issue of, uh, of hitching up to uh, equipment. One of the issues is that this, this hitch system, which is commercially available, in Europe, it was not available in the U.S. or there's very limited supply with a couple of suppliers who are no longer in business. Um, 
our partners uh, to the farm hack community in France had developed full documentation for this system and had published them. Uh, and we're, again, making those open source and available for sharing. Um, however, uh, not only was it in, Fran in French, but their steel stock was metric. So here's an example of our community coming together to adapt the design uh, that can be made in an American shop uh, or a Canadian shop using uh, standard dimension steel stock. And so that's exactly what the farm hack community did is we adapted uh, their basic design and documented it uh, in, uh, with step-by-step -step instructions about how to manufacture that uh, here in the US. Um, and so the result is, uh, is been uh, work days that we've been able to have here and a number of farms. We've had many different variations uh, both here in the U.S. and in Quebec and Canada and uh, other provinces in Canada that have now uh, taken those designs, adapted them, made some variations that make it easier to uh, manufacture in a farm shop and, uh, and, um, and then report it back to the community as far as how they're, how they're working and what improvements we can make for the next uh, farmer who starts to build them. So for example, on our farm, uh, we are, we're gonna have the benefit this year of not being the first out, but we'll be the probably the fourth or fifth farm here in the US using some of these techniques as we manufacture them for our own operation. Um, I'll show you one more uh, tool just as an example. Um, we also have uh, not just adapting uh, sort of and scaling uh, other types of tools, but we have some, some new concepts that are being developed. Um, you can see down here this, uh, the cult cycle, which has a, uh, uh, which is addressing the, the challenge of small scale cultivating tractors that are, are no, not particularly available. Uh, and then applying some of the collaborative uh, flexibility of prototyping tools uh, to the farm manufacturing environment. So making a modular uh, pedal powered uh, bicycle, uh, pedal powered uh, tractor that can be used for uh, uh, garden, uh, for uh, uh, market garden scale uh, cultivation. And, and again, very low cost and many, many iterations. And so this is an example again, of a, it's become an international collaboration and we're bringing in a number of different folks on the pedal powered and electrification and standardization of, uh, of cultivating uh, toolbars uh, into this conversation. Um, and you can see the basic, uh, uh, some of the basic documentation here uh, that's been posted so far and we will have uh, to advance the quality of this documentation and to bring in more folks into this conversation, uh, FarmHack is helping to coordinate an event coming up in, uh, at the end of March to, uh, to further document an, a build process for one of these cultivators cycles um, uh, coming up in Cambridge, Mass. at the end of this month. Um, and with that, I encourage you to, uh, to browse the tools that are available. You can look at the top, there's a search bar, but I, I guess with that, I will, uh, I'll turn it over to, uh, to Daniel to do a, a little bit of a walkthrough of the various elements of the, of the other elements of the FarmHack website and how to use it. Great, thanks so much, Dwayne. Um, so I will go ahead and share my screen. I'll need to stop sharing my screen. <laughs> oh, we can see your screen. Okay. All set? All set. Okay, great. Um, so thank you, Dorn, for going through those tools. Um, I'll just 
do a quick overview of of how to get started with documenting tools on the PharmHack website. Um, the first thing that you would need to do is sign in or create an account. Um, I should already be signed in here, so I'll go back to the home page. And um, and basically the way that the way that the PharmHack site navigation works is up here on this top toolbar we have tools. Um, this is just a list that is organized by um, most recently updated tool. Um, so when a tool wiki is contributed to or a, a conversation is had about it, it jumps back to the top of the list. Um, and then here within the conversations tab, there is actually a text search so that you can search for, um, for instance, germ and you can come up with, um, with these you know, germ chambers, um, germ chamber designs which have been iterated on a couple of times. Going back to the front page, um, we have the the Pharma community has developed a um, a template for documenting tools, and that's here in this getting started section. So from the front page, top right, getting started, um, and within this section is a lot of useful information, including you can also find this the same video that's on the front page here. Um, about how to post to the forum, how to use the website in general, and then here, this, this really important piece, tool is a template for guiding your first post. Um, so if you click there, the tool template wiki comes up, and this wiki itself is also uh, editable by the community and has been improved on over time as we've learned new ways to document tools, um, new tools, new, new web tools that we're using to insert photo albums, um, spreadsheets, etc. Um, but basically this, this tool template wiki is structured in the way that all of our tool documentation is. So the first part of it is a brief profile. That's this first part that you see now. There's usually a photo and a short description that um, that is just a few sentences long, giving a bit of information about the tool and a title. And below that is the actual tool wiki, which is, as Dorn was saying, like a Wikipedia page. Um, so you can edit this tool profile, as you see this link to do that here. Um, and you can also edit this wiki. And anyone can make edits to any of this stuff at any time. And all of the revisions are tracked here. Um, so we can see that there are have been a number of uh, a number of edits over time to to this tool template. Um, and you can go back through them and look at what each specific edit was. So you can actually look at the the evolution of the of the tool documentation. So we, the, the VARA community basically offers this um, template as a starting place for people to document their tool. Um, it's by no means meant to be the, the be all end all uh, tool documentation template, but um, it's kind of what the, what the, what the community has um, come to agree upon as some useful standards for getting started. Um, so as I said, starting with a title, um, and a really useful piece is uh, the problem statement, which basically says, you know, I'm I'm facing this problem on my farm, and that is why I uh, why I needed to create this tool, or why I'm looking for a solution. And I should also say that you can you can also document just a problem statement and put that up on the FarmHack website, um, and ask for folks to uh, to reflect back any ideas they have about how you might solve that problem. Here we have the functional description approach section, and basically, as we go through this, each each section is just described um, in detail here. Um, how people have document have used that section in the past, what we suggest for how to use it, um, how the tool is used, bill of materials and sourcing, um, which is really important when folks are trying to get together a um, you know, a, a list of materials to document a specific tool. Um, it's, it's really useful for them to have a concept of how much is this tool going to cost them to build 
um, and where can they get those materials. So you'll also see in this section there are some examples. Um, for example, on this water wheel tool, um, this, this tool documenter used Google Docs to embed spreadsheets into their tool documentation. They also used video to embed, um, to embed instructional video into their documentation. So this just gives an example of um, the range of possible uh, documentation technologies that you can use to get the message across about the tool that you're trying to post. Um, and here are some how-tos, um, how to embed from Google Docs, how to embed from OneDrive. Um, that's, you know, if, you, if you're working in Microsoft Office, then you can use a cloud-based uh, tool called OneDrive to embed your Excel document or whatever. And then down to the construction how to build section, um, we recommend, you know, either using your own, uh, your own slideshow that you've created or creating one with a tool like Imgur or Instructables and then embedding it. So here's an example um, back to the germination chamber of uh, tool documentation that uses Imgur to go through the documentation step by step. So um, there's a picture and accompanying explanation of, of that step in the process. And you can go through the entire process and see how this particular germination chamber was built. Um, then there's also, you know, next steps, goals and barriers. So this is an opportunity again for you to, to voice some of the things that aren't working for you in your design or, or aren't working for, for the community in the design. Um, if you would like to uh, sell a piece of, uh, a tool or piece of equipment that you've created in, in the open source uh, community, then we also welcome that. Um, and then some sections for research and resources and ongoing projects, which is another really important section where you can link to other tools that are um, that are either using related technologies or are um, branched off of the tool that is being documented in this piece of documentation or have some other kind of relation. Maybe they're solving a similar problem statement. Um, Maybe they're replacing replacing the tool um, with some other piece of equipment. And there are two different ways to replace it. Anything like that, th those are things that can be linked to in the ongoing projects section. And then attached to each tool profile and wiki is also a tool forum. Um, we have a couple of different kinds of forums on the Farm Hack website. There are event forums. There are general forums that aren't attached to a specific tool. And then there are tool forums. And there are four different kind of tags for um, information in the tool forum. New information, ideas, questions, and problems. And as you can see, there's been an ongoing conversation about the best way to document tools via farm hack. And that's, that's the, that, those are the forum conversations that you're seeing here. So that that basically covers um, that basically covers the tool documentation section of the website. Um, and another thing that we welcome folks to do is is to host a farm hack event. Um, so just like we had a um, a tool template for 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 documenting a tool, we also have a tool that is about organizing farm hack events. This community, um, in, the, in the first several years, a lot of the events were organized by a core group of organizers. And what we really welcome is for folks to, you know, decide that they'd like to have a farm hack event in their community and use the platform and use the tools in the spirit of open source to do that. So this uh, piece of documentation here is designed to help you to identify how to host a, host a farm hack event. And what, what does a farm hack event um, entail and, and what do you need to put it on? Um, so 
yeah, please feel free to take a look at this and think about whether um, whether a farm hack event would be a thing that you'd love to have in your community in the near future. Um, so I think that I'll I'll go ahead and open it up again for questions um, if anyone has any. And um, and yeah, I'm happy happy to to answer any questions that you that you guys have. So I, and there's one question already posted about uh, if the uh, documentation is posted, uh, whether there's been instances of that then being patented and protected. And uh, Daniel posted a couple links to follow up on that, but partly this is to uh, protect that. Once it's posted, once that core idea is posted, uh, it's licensed through the Creative Commons. So they would have to prove that it is substantially different than what was posted. Um, uh, and, and so this is sort of, the, this is essentially protecting it from being patented uh, um, in, in essence. So that Creative Commons license is, is really the important element there. And there's an organization around protecting what gets put into the Creative Commons. And so FarmHack is being able to use that process. And so when you see that, that you can notice in the logo of uh, FarmHack the left-facing C, and that sort of indicate an indication of that uh, of that uh, left C licensing. Um, does that? Uh, I, I hope that helps. Uh, there's also been some question as far uh, as uh, the process of uh, liability of posting these questions, and that's also a uh, a uh, covered under the Creative Commons license uh, as well. So there's there's protection uh, in that association on that. And I encourage you to, and we'll uh, we'll post a link uh, to the uh, Creative Commons here in the chat in a moment too. We have other uh, questions from the participants. Heidi, is there anything else that you'd like us to cover? Any questions that you have? I could, um, well, we're waiting for Heidi. I don't think her, her talk uh, button is pressed. But uh, I, I would point out that in addition to uh, sort of the hardware and uh, the tools uh, that I showed, uh, some of the activities also on software tools, so enterprise tools and spreadsheets and uh, and farm management and record keeping systems. So that's that's very much part of uh, some of the projects that are getting posted and where there's a good bit of activity. Um, and one of the areas that I'm particularly excited about exploring is being able to identify not just tools, but as uh, Daniel mentioned, the idea of problem statements and being able to search by uh, what your what particular issue that uh, we're all facing and identify different approaches to it. So, for example, if we have soil compaction and we're looking for a solution, it's not just looking for a subsoil or a piece of steel and uh, and that kind of tool, but also looking for uh, cover crop approaches that may address the same issue. Or likewise with our our tractor design for cultivating, looking at alternative uh, mulching systems that reduce the need for cultivation and improve soil health, which are addressing the same issue, which is essentially reducing weed pressure for uh, the crops that are actually trying to grow. So I think uh, that's a large part of our development effort as we go forward is to maybe make it easier to find. Uh, solutions and to communicate with other folks who are working on the same same types of problems uh, as we explore different ways to approach those and improve our operations together. Great, thanks uh, you guys for sharing all that information. I, I don't think that there's anything specific that you haven't haven't covered. Uh, I, 
hopefully folks have found this to be a valuable introduction to what farm hack is about and how they can take advantage of it and, and support it and participate in it. And um, I uh, have typed up on the chat room a link to the survey and I see that there's um, some other links that Dan and Dorn have put up for folks. Um, are there any questions that folks have at this point? If you do, just please type them, type them in. Are anyone on here located near Cincinnati? If anyone who's listening is near Cincinnati, please speak up. Looking like not. Uh, Dan or Dorn, do you have any um, resources that might help Cody? Remind me. Um, yeah, Cody's to... in Cincinnati. He looks like he must be based in Cincinnati and is maybe looking to connect with folks in that area. No one else that's on is uh, indicating that they're from the Cincinnati area. So do you happen to have any contacts in that r region? Uh, there, there are certainly folks within the farm hack community from that area. I don't think we've had a Cincinnati farm hack event yet, um, but the best way to uh, identify folks and, and bring them together is, the, is to have these meetups. Because uh, inevitably there are folks in the community who are willing to participate in this way. It's really, and so the local events are a way to identify folks and get them together. And I think uh, Daniel mentioned it in the introduction, but how important that is in 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 having this process work is that it's it's not uh, is that it's a social process as well and that it's fun. <laughs> I think we sort of missed we sort of glossed over that. <laughs> that, that one of the key elements of this is that we get together uh, and with other folks and in addition to problem solving, which is fun in itself, is that uh, you know we're talking about our farms. We're we're also involving a lot of folks who aren't necessarily farmers, but have a lot of skills and want to build a better agricultural system. And so this is a way to invite people to farms or other agricultural uh, related establishments um, and bring them into the conversation. Uh, and then so that's what's and and eat really great food that we help prepare together. Drink some local uh, some local beverages, and uh, usually, you know, cooler months there's usually a bonfire involved. Uh, usually, it may happen over a couple of days too. Um, and so, I guess I would encourage uh, if folks are interested to reach out uh, to the Farmer community and and uh, and if if you have some local local agricultural organizations there. We're happy to help facilitate getting an event going to find other folks in your area who can help um, and develop, you know, come up with a few problem statements that are particular to your area. And uh, part of what the farmhack community can also help do is not only facilitate the event but also help with the documentation. Um, that, uh, that, that makes the event more than just what happens on that day. It makes it live on and be able to be built upon by the, the wider world uh, and give you essentially a return on investment in your effort for both putting the event on and for document, documenting uh, the, the projects and the ideas that come out of that. So there's a question that if it reach, the best way to reach out is to post on the forum, but also you can send a, an email directly to info at farmhack.net. Uh, and Daniel uh, will have uh, Daniel's role as network facilitator, so uh, is to help uh, link folks up. So if you don't get, we, we try to make sure if you don't get an immediate response back from the forum, that that you still that there we have some facilitated exchange to keep keep the conversations going and to help find folks that are relevant in your area or either geographically or relevant to your interests, uh, your problems and or your tools that you're working on.
we have uh, other questions from the from the room from the uh, folks who are listening. Um, I guess I'd also say that uh, we are going through right now a process with FarmHack uh, uh, to improve the quality of the website and usability. So uh, I, we, we're the, what you see right now is uh, essentially our first version, which we're getting a lot of we've learned a tremendous amount uh, about how to do open source tool documentation and to make that. And, and recognizing that there are a lot of improvements, and so we've been testing uh, and uh, and are in the process of developing some improved ways to search tools and to post and to get at information that's relevant on the PharmHack site, and to make that process easier going forward. But we'd really in one of the it's it's really important for the community to have that feedback so as. If you are frustrated with various aspects or you have suggestions, uh, there's a forum. Uh, within the forum, there's a in FarmHack talk area. Uh, we really invite those questions. And if you are so inclined, we have uh, an interview process for uh, the usability study that, that's going on that is even that is really helpful as we set development priorities to improve improve the website, improve the services and uh, make it more useful for everybody involved. So we really encourage you to, uh, if, if you're so inclined, to provide that feedback because that's what makes this process a lot better. Great. Well, thanks again. That, um, if there are no other questions, I think we'll uh, be prepared to sign off. Um, we really appreciate everybody joining us today. And uh, I'll encourage you to join us if you're interested in hops growing. On April 8th, we'll have our next uh, webinar. And it will be looking at growing hops. So thanks again for joining us, everyone. And thank you to Daniel and Dorn for sharing this information information with us. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you, Heidi, for, for giving us the opportunity. That's our pleasure. Everyone have a good afternoon. Thank you. You too.